Well, that was Scotland, and in a bit of indecent haste, we said goodbye to the newly arrived GK5. Headed for the airport, jumped on the plane, and got ourselves en route back to the boat for the big challenge. actually a number of challenges. First we had to get the boat out of its space where we had really been blocked in. So on a Saturday morning over time we had to squeeze out of this tiny space, stick the boat in the water, check everything still worked and get ourselves around to the anchorage. Well that's us just anchored back in the Seychelles. The next challenge was the hurdle of clearing customs. All best left to somebody who's got their tolerance for this kind of nonsense. And after 25 hours of paperwork, we finally made it and got in amongst the real challenge. How to get to my yacht on my yacht. Cruisers definitely split into two camps. There's the monohull sailors and there's the catamaran sailors. These can be further subdivided into lightweight and heavyweight, but basically when it comes to monohulls and catamarans, both remain fairly entrenched. But then you get turncoats like us, who after 10 years on the monohull, no way would we go back. Why would you? when we could be doing 10 knots in, it was about 25 knots of breeze. And just look at how level the glass is here. Just nothing moves, beautiful sailing. Another great thing about catamarans, if you want to amuse yourself by going up to mast, then they're dead flat, so you don't get battered senseless. The Q flag had come adrift, so it was a quick run up the mast to get it back down, although it was hardly necessary, having come from Seychelles, the world's most complex, slow and bureaucratic admin system for yacht entry. We arrived in May Yacht, where it was perhaps the world's most relaxed. Oh, there might go. It takes a few days for us to get used to living like this again, at sea, then it becomes comfortable. First few nights we're just about trying to get as much sleep as you can and then recover during the day, but now we're getting into it and we can actually stay awake during the day. It's dinner time with a movie. Now back to work and keep moving, Jason. Local hero. And chicken balls. I didn't know chickens had balls. Night times are different though. They go on forever. 12 hours in the pitch black, having chosen the darkest part of the month to travel. So the wind is going to die. And we have 140 miles left on and we want to end before dark for the night. So full main and up goes a lightweight sail. 
Well, the race is on. We've got to get to my yacht before dark. We've got 153 miles to go and the forecast is for the wind to just die and die and die until the motor goes on. So now we've got the big guy out. Let's see if he'll pull us down there on time. Seven hundred and ninety miles later, we're motoring into the current and no wind, but my yacht is on horizon, as is my bed. And the first thing to do, get a big needle stuck up your nose. All negative and time for a Moroccan tagine oh, in Mayotte. Seychelles is billed as being African, but really it's Africa light. We're nearly 300 miles from continental Africa, but Africa this clearly is. Corrugated iron is the building material of choice, second only to concrete. Well, mango, only just mango season was over in the Seychelles, but pleased to say, 800 miles south, the mangoes are just coming into fruit. Wikipedia says something like 29% of the population lives under corrugated. And I said it's mostly concrete. And some of the people living under corrugated are actually goats. I think if you want to get mugged in New York, this is maybe where you come to. <laughs> and that's definitely a foul slur on the inhabitants of New York. You so far have been nothing but pleasant and quite cool. Saturday lunchtime in Mayotte. We still haven't worked out where these people come from. Are they locals? Are they French here on holiday? Well, that's it for our uneventful trip down to Mayotte, past the hardest part of the Indian Ocean. Hope you enjoyed it. Come back for more.